Hello and thank you for coming to check out this video. In this one I'll be covering extension mobility as that's the next topic on my lab guide that I'm doing for the CCMP and CCIE collaboration. If we take a look at the CCIE collaboration exam topics and we scroll down to the bottom in the domain 7.0 collaboration applications and services we can go into 7.7e and then we'll see extension mobility is listed there under mobility features. Furthermore, if we go to the Clackam exam, which is Cisco Advanced Call Control and Mobility Services, again, if we scroll to the bottom in the domain 6.0 mobility, extension mobility is listed under the configuration section and again under the troubleshooting section for 6.0 mobility. If you take a look at the collaboration core exam, it's not listed there, but that's fine. I'm still going to cover this topic because it's listed under the CCIE as well as Clackam. What we'll be covering in this video is also in this section of the SRND, which is extension mobility. In the description of the video, I'll be listing the link to the SRND as well as the link to the feature configuration guide as well as the exam topics for easy reference. Now the SRND is going to have a lot of great information and the feature configuration guide is going to cover step by step the configuration. Also it will have the link, the URL for extension mobility which if you're going to use this URL you'll have to change this section to be an IP address of one of the nodes in your lab cluster whichever one you want to be servicing the phones in terms of extension mobility. Now let's hop back over to the SRND. The SRND is really good at listing things out very well and it also gives you a quick overview of what extension mobility is as well as the extension mobility architecture and the flow of how things work. So it shows you that the phone is going to reach out to the Cisco IP phone services service that's going to reply back. Then the phone will start interacting with the Cisco Extension Mobility Application Service, which that will interact with the Cisco Extension Mobility Service, and that will then interact with the database. And I believe that's for authentication when it's interacting with the database. So let's take a look up here at seven. Yeah, it's verifying credentials. But a very important note that I think a lot of people miss is that steps one and two are skipped if the services provision enterprise parameter is set to internal because when that's set to internal the url for extension mobility is actually going to be a part of the configuration file for the phone now i think in this section we would actually be getting into extension mobility cross cluster uh, i would definitely highly recommend reading this part of the srnd as well as the feature and configuration guide but I'll be walking through the configuration and I'll also skip at least one thing that I think people typically miss and I think that it would be very good for you to know if you're going to take the exams and we'll go through and see when missing that configuration what happens. So without any further ado, I'll go ahead and jump in to the configuration. The first thing that we'll do to configure the extension mobility service is we'll go under device, device settings, and then we want to go to phone services. Once we get into phone services, we want to click on the name. We can give it any name that we want to give it, which I'll just specify EM as short for extension mobility. The service URL, I've already went ahead and put it together. I'm using the link from the document. And instead of using the IP address, I'm actually going to be using my fully qualified domain name. Now, if you're going to use the fully qualified domain name, you will want to make sure that the phones have a DNS server available, and then also that the DNS server has this fully qualified domain name configured as a resolvable address. We're going to leave the service category as XML service, and service type will be left as the default as well. We definitely want to check the box to enable you may or may not want to check the box for enterprise subscription. I'm not going to check it so that I can, again, show you 
uh, later on down the road a different configuration that if you leave undone will cause problems and you want to know about those problems. Enterprise subscription will basically make every device and device profile subscribed to this extension mobility phone service. Uh, so I don't want to give up that control of my configuration. I don't want the system to just give this this service to everybody and every device. I want to be able to control who is subscribed to extension mobility and who is not. So I'll go ahead and click save. And for the service parameter information, I'm not doing anything there. There are other ones that people use this for, like one button login for contact center agents to log into the queue, but I'm not doing any of that for extension mobility. And now we need to go under device phone and choose which phone that we want to give this service to. I'm going to do it with the extension number 1000. So we'll go ahead and click on this phone and we one, one thing that we need to do here on the actual phone configuration is go down and make sure that it's configured for extension mobility. So if we scroll down to the box or section extension mobility, or sorry, extension information, you can check the box for extension, enable extension mobility. And then I'll click save. And after that's done loading, I need to go to the section called related links. And in the drop down, we want to select subscribe slash unsubscribe services. Then we have to click go. If we don't subscribe to this service, then when we hit the gear icon, the settings button, then the phone won't see this service as being available. So once we go ahead and subscribe, that is something that you'll see down the road that when I hit the gear icon, the service will be available. So now I'll hit apply config and I will restart the device as well so that it gets the updated information. As far as configuring this device for extension mobility, we're done. But we do need to make a device profile so that when somebody wants to log into the phone, they actually have a profile associated with their user account that can be used to log them into the phone. In order to create a device profile, we need to go under device, device settings and device profile. Something to make note of before we do that is that this is an 8851 phone. That does matter, but it also kind of doesn't. And we'll talk more about that in just a moment. So device, device settings, device profile. The device profile that I'm going to make will be from my user one. So here we're going to choose a Cisco 8851. Like I said, it does matter and it doesn't matter. One of the reasons why it does matter is because some devices have certain layouts or features that if you use a device profile for say an 8851 to log into an 8841 phone then the login will be successful it just might not pick up all of the features or configuration that's associated with that device profile on the other hand, if you were to use a device profile for an 8851 to log into a 7975 phone and that 7975 phone is using the skinny the protocol, then that won't really work because now you're mixing up two different protocols, two different signaling protocols, and they don't really uh, get along all too well. So that wouldn't really work out. Anyway, with this device selected, we'll hit next. Now we'll have to give the device profile a name and I will name it user one underscore UDP. And that's my own thing that just stands for UD, UDP stands for user device profile. If you were to talk to other people about UDP, they would think transport layer protocols like TCP and UDP. Anyway, um, now there's only two things that I'm going to do on this page. One is going to be the phone button template, which I'll make that the standard 8851. And then the soft key template is the other thing that I'll be doing here. So I'll make them a standard user. Then click save. Now this device profile is going to need an extension. And without the extension, given that this is a a profile for a SIP device, the device wouldn't register due to a lack of 
a DN. So I'm just going to use a number that is not configured on any other devices so that I can tell that when I log in that it was successfully logged into and that the configuration from the device profile has been applied. So I'm just going to use 1111. I'll click over here so that the page can load and I'll put it into the internal partition. I'll also uh, give it the internal CSS so that if you want to, you can test calls from the logged in phone to other extensions. Another thing is that you, there's a lot of stuff you can do here on this directory number or even on the device profile, but I'm not doing it because I just want to test login and log out really. Now we have to associate this device profile with one of our end users. So we'll go under end user, user management, and I'll select user one. I don't remember the pin, so I'm going to set it to 134679 because that's something that when I go to the phone to put the pin in, I can put it in pretty easily. Now we'll go down to the extension mobility section and where it says available profiles, I'll move that down to be a controlled profile. There's other stuff down here like enable extension mobility cross cluster. We don't need to enable that just to do extension mobility. Extension mobility and EMCC are different things. They're very similar, but they're also very different. We also don't need to do anything in the mobility information section, but something that I want you to note is that if you look into the feature and configuration guide is going to tell you that you have to check the home cluster in the associate a device profile to a user section. That's something that's needed if you do extension mobility cross cluster. It's not needed for extension mobility. So I'd be willing to bet that if we were to go down into the extension mobility cross cluster section, they probably also tell you to check the box for the home cluster there as well. And I just want to confirm it. But I will likely file a bug to have it removed from extension mobility section. In the extension mobility cross cluster for a user, it doesn't look like they state uh, checking the home box. So I, what I'd be willing to bet is that whoever added it to the documentation was probably supposed to add it to the extension mobility cross cluster section and they accidentally probably put it under the extension mobility section instead so i'll go ahead and file some sort of a, a doc enhancement saying that we need to remove it from the extension extension mobility part and add it to the extension mobility cross cluster section. And I'm glad that I came back to this documentation because uh, I want to talk about this part. So stick around to the end of the video and we'll talk some more about some of the stuff in the documentation because this is, is definitely going to be worth sticking around to see it. So at this point, we've created the phone service for extension mobility. We've gone to the, the device and enabled extension mobility. We've also subscribed the device to the extension mobility service. We created a device user profile and we put a directory number on that profile. Then we went to the end user and we made the device profile a controlled profile for that user down in the extension mobility section. And now we're actually ready to test the login. So to test the login, we actually have to go over to the phone and hit this gear icon. Once we hit the gear icon, we will transition from looking at the main screen to looking at the applications screen. We can see eight is EM, so I selected eight. Now I have to go ahead and put in the user ID and the pin. At this point, I can hit submit, and then we can see the login is successful, and it says resetting, please wait. Now I'm going to exit out of this screen and we'll actually go back to the main screen on the phone and you can see that the directory number is now 1111. 
that lets us know that the device profiles configuration has been applied to the phone as and it's in use now. Um, if we wanted to log out, we again have to hit the gear icon to get to the application screen, but you can see here that there is no option for extension mobility. Let's go ahead and jump back over to the CUCM web interface. And if we go under device, device settings, device profile, and we can select the device profile that we configured earlier. Now, if we go under related links and we do subscribe, unsubscribe services, and then hit go, we want to select a service, we'll choose EM, then hit next, hit subscribe, and we are going to close that out. So now if we go back over to the phone screen, you can see that it's going to do a quick blip and you might even miss it here. But now that just happened and we can now see EM. So if we hit the exit button a couple times to go back to the main screen, you'll see that I'm still logged in and the extension is 1111. So I hit the gear icon again to go to the application screen and I'll select EM where I'll be asked if I want to log out user one. I'll say yes and we get log out successful and then you see resetting, please wait. And then if we hit exit a few times, you can see the phone is now trying to register because of the reset. And upon registration, you can see 1000 is the directory number as that's the directory number associated with the phone and not the device profile. Now you are familiar with what extension mobility is, how to configure it, how to test the login, how to test the logout, and you're also familiar with at least one mistake people make when doing their configurations. Now let's go back and take a look at the features and configuration guide. So, um, Looking here in the documentation, in the, in the extension mobility cross cluster section, if we go down to the troubleshooting section, there's a lot of really good information in there. And I knew that this table existed, but I was having a hard time finding it before starting to record this video, but I stumbled upon it earlier in this recording. And this table is really important but I, th I think that it should also be added to the troubleshooting section of extension mobility because um, the, here's the EM app error codes and the EM service error codes, but there's going to be a lot of error codes with extension mobility, not just EMCC, but extension mobility, which has a lot of great error codes as well. So I don't know if you'll need to know this for any, any uh, stuff on the exam, but I want to note that if you run into any issues where you're trying to log in or you're trying to log out and there's some sort of an error message, it's absolutely important to get the error code as well as the message displayed on the phone because there's never been a time where I've been troubleshooting extension mobility or EMCC login where there was no error message and I've never had a time where the error message was not helpful. So make sure that you get that and go look it up. Another mistake people make, if we go back to the device, is on the configuration page of the device, when we scroll down a ways, we uh, have the checkbox here. We, we did this, enable extension mobility. Many people forget to do this. So you would get a, a specific error message just for this checkbox not being checked. So make sure that you check the error messages. That's, that's my advice if you're going to be supporting an environment that has extension mobility or extension mobility cross cluster. Always make note of the error code and the phone display because it will very much so speed up your time to resolution. Going back over to the extension mobility section. I really want to again highlight the importance of reading this documentation because I didn't cover the extension parameters and there's a lot of other stuff there that if you want to play around with it in your lab or even at least just read about it, it's going to be worth doing so. 
Um, if we go a little further here, we can see the device profile fields for extension mobility. And I only did two things on the device profile, but there's a lot of other stuff here that uh, I recommend going and taking a look at. And then also the SRD again has a ton of great information. But at this point, I'm kind of just rambling and saying stuff that I've already covered earlier. So at the end of the day, just make sure you go and, and review these sections of documentation and maybe even uh, do some testing in the lab. I hope there was something of value here and I'll see you in the next video.